Friends Podcast. And here we are once again, the Artist Friends Podcast. This is Clyde J. Kale, and it's August the 5th. This is our first meeting for the month of August. So exciting. And this is episode 8. Artist Friends Podcast, and I'm here with Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson, and hello, Diane. Hello, Constance. Hi, Clyde. Hi, everyone. Hi, Clyde. Hello, everybody. All right. This week, we are going to talk about Gary Vaynerchuk. Now, we've mentioned him if you are a regular listener to our podcast, and if you continue to listen, you're going to hear a lot about Gary Vaynerchuk. He's our main motivation motivational speaker and usually Gary Gary has a tendency to use a lot of New Jersey street language <laughs> but we found it in, I found an interview this past <laughs> week where he's he's uh calm he's uh doesn't use that much of that language and since our podcast is kind of g-rated you know we're going out to the general public I didn't think it I've never uh, used uh, clips, audio clips from his his uh, talks because of his language. But this one, I was able to grab uh, three audio clips without, uh, so you can get a chance to really uh, hear uh, the actual voice if you've never had before. If you can uh, hear uh, his main focus and why we are so excited about it and why we follow Gary Vaynerchuk. Here we go. And we're actually going to talk today about authenticity and how brands can create real and meaningful connections with consumers. And I'm hoping you're going to share some of your talks today. So welcome uh, to the Facebook space. Thank you for coming. Thanks for having me. So let's get straight in. So tell me, we're talking about authenticity yes. in a brand. What does it mean to you from a brand communication? You know, it's, this is an interesting question. I have a pretty, for this world, a pretty left field point of view on this. And my point of view is that we need to achieve relevance. I'm looking at 11, 12, 13 faces right now. And what Pepsi or BMW or Coca-Cola or Facebook means to all these people is actually different. And so for me, authenticity gets very close to relevancy because when you're a brand, there are so many variables in the world. There's so many things that you're doing. You know, some people may drink a cola to get a burst of energy. Others, it may be a reminder of spending time with their grandmother. And I think we're so literal in today's brand and marketing world. We're so stuck on sentences and adjectives, and we spend so much time on subjective things that don't matter to the consumer on the other end. So my perspective is, much like a human being, you and I are gonna act differently right now as humans in this interview than if we were with our family, than if we were on a weekend in Las Vegas with our best friends, than if we were presenting to 5,000 people. People are always like, Gary, you're a little bit different then when you, I see you on video, I'm like, yeah, I'm on stage to 7,000 people versus I'm here with you. There's different versions. And I think people struggle in ad land to understand things are multidimensional. And so for me, authenticity is actually being comfortable in the 74 to 7,400 variations of how you show up. And so I think that we are uh, human beings, executives are limiting brands' ability to be authentic because they want it to be so literal and so safe and so pr and so approved by the queen bee that, uh, that I think we live in a very non-authentic world. And I think the reason humans continue to scale in popularity is they're a focus group of the audience. They're, uh, they're, a, they're an executive group of one. And I, I think one of the reasons real celebrities are struggling and have lost share is they do have PR people. They do have big deals with movie studios that they're scared of breaking. And so I think anyone who can actually show all the versions of themselves will win. And I think right now the creative industry, A, isn't set up to make enough creative. 
be a great point for you to be DNA in it to actually show up authentic. And this is not schizophrenia. This is not throw up against the wall and see what sticks. This is not being scattered. This is being true. And so I think authenticity uh, has a far more, uh, on its end, there's always a, something that delivers at the end, a piece of content or creative. And I think it's being far more wide than it's been over the last 80 years. Okay. Thoughts, comments? Who wants to go first? Well, I think it goes back to just being yourself and how important that is and not trying to be like everyone else. And because if you are tr trying to be too much like everybody else, you're not going to stick out. You're not going to, you're going to kind of blend in with the masses and you're not, as far as being an artist anyway, you're not, you know, I mean, everybody's different. Everybody has a different background, even people in the same families and stuff that grew up together with all the same, you know, things that they experienced. They all, you know, everyone has different personality. Everyone has a different way of looking at the world. It's just the way it should be. And I think on social media, a lot of times it doesn't come across that way because everybody's trying to emulate, um, you know, somebody that they think is the pinnacle of whatever they're trying to do. So they try to be like that person instead of themselves. That's a very good point. Um, in other talks, uh, Gary has mentioned that if you're not careful, uh, you can uh, get trapped in like a funnel or, or a tunnel, a tunnel vision. And you see somebody who gets a lot of likes are a lot of comments on a particular post. Well, okay, I'm going to do that. And before you know it, you get yourself trapped into being unauthentic, being like you said, Diane, trying to be like somebody else. Constantly. Yeah, and the problem with that is that you you can do it for a little while, but you can't keep that up because it's not really authentically you. It's them. <laughs> so you can only do it for so long, and before you know, things start clashing and not working. Absolutely. Yeah, and that's, that's why the branding, you know, you have to be yourself, you know, and do your own branding. And you might be able to, you know, try to follow in their footsteps for a while and then just, but you have to be your own individual. As far as well, you, yeah, you can take things that pe other people are using or, or other people are doing, but you have to put your own spin on it. You can't right. copy what they're doing because then you're just a machine. You're not <laughs> you're not an authentic person. <laughs> I think right. this this goes back to a uh, a previous uh, podcast uh, about where we presented uh, some comments from Stephen Bauman when he said, when he was talking about on, on LinkedIn, presenting stories, collectors want to know stories. And this gets into the authenticity. If you're being authentic about your story, you're telling somebody the whys and the motivations and the inspiration that you created this particular piece of work, that's your story. That's coming from you. And that will come across as being authentic. Too. And it it it, it uh, goes back to that's why I like Gary Vanacek. He he has a way of pointing these things out, you know, to us. Yeah, they're obvious. I mean, when you listen to it, and you go, "Well, that's nothing new." But then when you really think about it and you reflect upon your own activities, okay, yeah, yeah, I need to do a little more of this. I need to tweak a little more of that. Yeah. yeah. And I used to take from this artist and she used to always tell us that your uniqueness is your, your greatness. I forget exactly how she put it, but it's your, your great is developed. You develop your uniqueness. It's, it's how you develop your uniqueness. That's your greatness. Another term that I hear some coaches use, uh, I, I, you know, across the internet, artist coaches coaches and artists, artists, mentors, you know, and they say, finding your voice, finding the artist's voice. And that's what mm -hmm. this is about, you know. It's, just, it's you developing that uniqueness. 
And that's your greatness is developing in that. For some people, it comes across naturally. For other people, you have to work at it. But then that's, that's what this is all about. That's what art well, I, I think it's all about self-discovery, too. Because as you're growing, is, and, you, know, you don't initially you don't really know who you are as a person and what things you believe in. And you're, you're right. you know, when you, especially once you start getting out on your own and and um you know in life <laughs> you um what don't know it? really who you are at first so a lot of your experiences and stuff kind of mold you and that What's all kind that? of becomes part of your story yeah was that henry 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 is that his name that is, yeah. said you needed to paint miles and miles and miles of canvas to, to and this goes along with developing your greatness as an artist this yeah, you just have to keep painting miles and miles of canvas. It I've just, never heard that before, but that's a, that's a pretty good quote. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for sharing, sharing that, Constance. Okay, let's move on to the next one. We, he, it's a little short, short clip about his uh, favorite platforms. Okay, so any favorite, you've mentioned a few, any favorite platforms or tools that are really good for helping these businesses to build that connection? Podcast, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, LinkedIn has exploded in the last six months. LinkedIn acts like Facebook did six, seven years ago. Organic reach on LinkedIn is shocking. So there's that. Instagram story ads is the most underpriced ad in the world. Buying Instagram swipe up story ads that take you exactly to where we want you to go for two to four dollar CPMs and they're actually being seen unheard of. So, um, those are some of the things I'm excited about. Okay, and what about your own channels, your your own podcast? I'm your down with it. Yeah, go away. Um, how are you learning? Not, not that I think you have any trouble with this, but how do you think you're learning more tips you can give about how you express yourself and what you've able to prepare for to be able to transfer into the brands that we, you communicate for? Look, the single thing I'm most proud of sitting at can is there's not a human here, not one, that makes more creative output that I do on a daily basis and collective, period. That is a specious but factual statement. There's not one person here that makes more content than I do. And I'm a CEO of a company, not a creative. And in that, you can imagine, in a world where me and my team are producing 40 to 100 pieces of content across all these platforms, there's a practitioner that allows me, I mean, the amount of mistakes, you know, it's funny, I'd be right here, is, um, Text change my team. We changed our mind. Okay. That statement when he said it true. I will never ever ever if I live to be a hundred will never be able to make as much content as he does. You know. <laughs> and, I, and I am not even going to attempt at that. Uh we've talked about this before in the previous podcast. And following his uh, Gary Varenchek recommendations of uh, you know uh, podcasting and and video and and blogging and you know whatnot, it is it, it's it, a full time job. <laughs> yeah, it's a full -time that's what job. he does for a living, though. You know, is creating content. Uh, I I like to paint. <laughs> I yeah. like to make stuff. So as an artist, we have to really. I think Diane, you mentioned once before, we have to really learn good time management skills, and because uh, you you have to do that content, you have to provide that content if you want to get out to the world, and it's especially important when we listen to the next clip that I'm I'm going to play. It, it will segue into that, but before we start that clip up, it's important to it's a way of getting your artwork out to the world and connecting with potential collectors. That's, so you have to do some of it, but do not drive yourself crazy. <laughs> well, they, I've heard from somewhere, but um, several people have said not to try to do all of them, not to spread yourself so thin that, you're, you, that you are driving yourself crazy trying to keep up with it all. You won't have time to do any artwork if you do that. Yeah. It's like, so you kind of have to decide which um, platforms 
you like and which ones are easiest for you to operate on and just go with those and, and tr don't stress yourself over trying to be on every single thing. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and it, it goes back to uh, in a previous uh, video, I think that I recommended for uh, Gary Vanacek when he, when he talks about, he recommends you know, YouTube and, you know, for the video and Facebook and podcasting and blogging, uh, pick the one that you feel the most comfortable with and that you have the best skills with. Not everybody is a writer. Not everybody can do videos, you know, not everybody can, can uh, talk, you know, can just start up a, open a microphone up and just start yammering away. Not everybody can do that. Yeah. So, Pick what you are most comfortable with, but pick at least one of them and be consistent and be persistent in doing that in line with your with your work. And getting back to uh, Beth and Bauman's recommendation, tell your story. Tell your story. And that's how you, that's the facility you use to tell your story to the world. Constance, you got anything to add, add to this? Not right this minute. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I was, I was just, oh, sorry, I was distracted. I'm trying, not, I'm trying not to be the one that talks all the time. You two has got I know. It. I'm sorry. I was distracted. How people, when you get interrupted or hear background noise or boats or hel helicopters or whatever it was on the tape that it, today when he was being, or that one we saw today, how it makes it it's like more real for people it's not you know it's, you're not like in a studio and all professional and everything it's kind of like you know stuff like that happens it's real life <laughs> yeah and i forgot so. you guys forget i have about nine bracelets on this wrist and four or five of them on this wrist and that's probably where some <laughs> of the noise is coming from because every time i move my wrist they jangle well when i do when i when i edit we, I do make jewelry, you know, we, <laughs> so I wear it, it we, all the time. Uh, okay, <laughs> let's listen to the last clip here, and uh, this will segue uh, exactly what I was saying before about uh, uh, getting the content out there, and you're, you're understanding why. So you have famously predicted many trends that have come true, so we couldn't be here with the helicopter planes both going on. What are the next big trends that you're looking at? I think that Alexa and Google Home is going to be a major, major factor over the next decade. And I implore, since we're here for, I always think Zucks has some secret lab when he's working on this, because I can't imagine Facebook not entering this foray. The attention of the end consumer is everything. You've tried portal. Yes, I have. I have. You're right. I have. Um, and to that point, that's a, that's a solid counter. I, I think that voice activated decision making is going to be a big deal because consumers care so little about privacy and so much about saving time. And nothing saves you more time than sitting in your living room deciding you want to go to a movie. And it is far faster for me to say, Alexa, Portal, Google Home, whatever Microsoft's got and whatever some Chinese company's got. Alexa, what movies are playing? That is faster than grabbing your phone and searching Bandango. And in that speed, and getting your answers will be enormous disruption over the next decade. So I'm extremely bullish on voice-activated devices. The reason why uh, the, we want to get as much on the Internet, manage our time, get ourselves on the Internet in as many platforms as we can is exactly because of what he said with the Alexa and Google Home. That is how... And I've said this over and over and over before. Diane and Constance heard me. Yes. <laughs> May not you know, have heard this. That is how you are going to be successful in the future. Guaranteed. If you get the way the Internet works, if you are on the Internet and as many platforms as possible, and not just one time, I mean consistently, posting your artwork out there, consistently post, posting your blog, consistently creating videos, consistently telling your story and everything, you will be associated with 
artwork of a certain category and of your brand of your you know jewelry in the case of you know wire wrap jewelry in in, in case of Constance uh, nature connecting with nature in the case of of Diane in my case of like pulp radio you know, radio art and that when someone says let me see some nature paintings uh, Alexis show me nature paintings Diane will come up. Her sight will come up. There'll be others, but hers will come up if she is constantly out there with it. Only some wire wrap jewelry, Const Constance will, co will come up. And in my case, my, my pop radio, it already does that. Now, I've done an experiment with uh, Alexis. I don't own a, a uh, Amazon Echo, and I don't own a, a home, but I have other friends on the internet and on Facebook that have, and I've asked, asked them to test some things, some things for me. I've, for the last, going on 20 years now, I've ran an internet radio station. I think I've mentioned this before, and it plays the old time radio shows from the 30s, 40s, and 50s. <clears throat> and I've widely distributed that. And as of this date, I have, when I tell people this, they they raise an eyebrow, but it's true. I have over a million listeners every day that log on and listen to that. And how I know that is I, I analyze the server logger stats. And every time there's a hit to the site or to the stream, of course, the server records that. I then take and break that down to where if they are listening 15 minutes or more, I count that as a valid listener. I take the, and of those, it cut, the figures come to over a million listeners a day. Now, I had friends, you know, uh, ask, you know, Alexa, play Mystery Play Internet Radio. Boom, bingo, my site comes up. Alexa, I have two channels. Alexa, ask, do you want to hear the Mystery Channel or you want to hear the Comedy Channel? I can only go on their word, so I ha I don't have it to test it myself. I then ask them to say, Alexa, play old time radio. And they said, Clyde, your site comes up. I then said, okay, what about my art? How about Clyde? Alexa, who is Clyde J. Kale? Bing, Clyde J. Kale operates Mr. Clyde Internet Radio, and Clyde J. Kale is a visual artist. It comes right up. I say, I've asked them, said, you know, and the same test on Google Home. Now, I've done Google Home testing just by using the phone where it says, ask Google, and I come up. Ask Google, I said, you know, hey, Google, who is by J. Kale? Boom, comes right up. Brings the page, you know, shows me, you know. Or the name or a uh, art piece, the art subject matter, and then I come up too. That's that's the eventual goal, which I still have a long way to, way to go. But the only reason why these things come up like that, folks, is because I've been on actively on the internet. I've been blogging. I've been been creating. Uh, you know, I haven't done an episode in a long time, but I created a Clyde's art stories. You know, it's a little audio podcast of uh, what's inspired me to create pieces of works of art. And the th funny thing about the art, I've only been actively pursuing a professional art career for three years now. When I started this, this art career, I had only maybe maybe 20 people in the world knew I was an artist. These were families and close personal friends. I now have verified stats of well over 100,000 people has seen my artwork. And that is growing, growing on a weekly basis. No, I'm, and this is the catch. Well, how much money are you making? <laughs> no, I'm not sufficiently uh, self, you know, living off of the art. But that is, is coming. That is the, that's the future. But you have to start somewhere. Diane Constance, you've heard the speech. Yes. <laughs> What's your, add, add some more of your own experiences to this for our listeners. Um, yeah, I mean, as, as far as trying to get your stuff on the internet, you have to be, the biggest thing I think is just being consistent and constantly be put, being 
putting something up. Um, it's hard sometimes to to do that consistently. Um, it's not always easy to do it, and that's where I fall down most of the time because I don't always have time to get that well, done. But it um, takes you a while to create one of your paintings too, so that's normal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'm I'm have a much slower process than you have, but you know it is um, just keep you have to keep doing it even if you when you don't see any result right away it's like it takes a long time and um you know you just have to keep doing it and have faith that eventually it'll pay off yeah oh. that that's why i uh in our for our conversations folks uh that we've been doing for the last uh, couple of years on our weekly meetings i present videos that reinforce that that it will it will happen that, that affirm that we are headed in the right direction. The Stephen Bauman videos, Gary Vaynerchuk videos, and some of the other you know videos. I try to look for you know videos that uh, uh, you know confirm, and we are headed in the right direction. Yeah, I mean yeah. a lot of a lot of things we've heard, even from things you brought up and other things I've seen on the internet. They all say the same thing, pretty much. You have to be out, you know, keep putting yourself out there, keep keep it going, keep consistent. Yeah. Be constantly putting stuff up. Yeah, one of my favorite, I know that it's supposed to just be the waterfall thing, but I do like to post on Instagram. But when I post on Instagram, it doesn't just post on Instagram because you, when you, it has the Facebook where it will post, also post on Facebook, Twitter, and Tumblr. So I'm actually posting in three places. And so that's pretty good when it does that. Yeah. Also, when I put a thing for sale on Etsy, it also posts on Twitter and Pinterest and Facebook. So those places also get. And then sometimes I'll go ahead and post something up on Pinterest also. So, but getting what that's doing though, like you said, okay, cross post. Yes, it gives the it, it gives the waterfall thing for the people who, who are on that site right then and there. It may get they may see it and they may not. But right. you are building you're building the groundwork for just being on the internet and searches when people search your name. Any, fi any final final thoughts here uh, about uh, our discussion with uh, Gary Benerchek? Brandon. Well, I think it's, it's mainly just being authentic, trying to be, you know, just be yourself and keep putting stuff out there. Keep, keep working. Be yeah. consistent. That's how it all boils down to. Yeah, I think the main thing that I got from the conversation was the branding. And that is just an individuality thing, you know, just stick to your, just your individual person. Just be yourself is what I got from it, branding. Yeah. That's your bet. That's your best brand. That's it. Yep. I think that <clears throat> that's, that's a pretty good wrap up. And uh, we're about ready to close this out. This is uh, August the 5th for uh, our Artist Friends Podcast, Episode 8. Now, before we close, I do want to, one last thing that's been, you know, been on my mind, you know, of course, all of the news, what's been happening this last week with the, the, uh, the mass shooting thing. I just want to say that uh, I don't want to be a downer, <clears throat> but I think that we should all uh, very much uh, say, send prayers and uh, condolences to the, the victims, there's too it's many really people pointing fingers one side or the other, and that doesn't do us any good. Uh, we are, as human beings, we should come together in mourning and, mour and mourn for those victims. And I think that will uh, be far more helpful than just trying to place blame. It's heartbreaking. It is. It's very heartbreaking. And uh, I'll probably end up doing some kind of a piece of, piece of artwork because of uh, that these kinds of things they uh, really affect me uh, I personally I don't like to uh, see people get hurt and for any reason you know, it's just and, heartbreaking and uh, so my 
me from a personal level, my prayers are out to the uh, families and the victims and my deepest condolences. That's all I got to say. Well, I think that goes for all of us. Yeah. This is <laughs> heartbreaking. <laughs> That's all I know to say is just heartbreaking. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks to everybody for listening. And hope you are enjoying these podcasts. It's informative. And please send us an email if you would like to be. This is an open invitation. If you would like to participate as an you know, active artist, as a member, you're certainly welcome. If you just want to be a guest you know, for one episode or so, send me an email. Kkl at sign mystery dash otr dot com. Bye, Diane. Bye, Constance. Bye. 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 All right. Bye. Bye, everybody. The Artist Friends Podcast is produced and edited by Clyde J. Kale. Participating artists, Diane Hunt and Constance Brosnan and Clyde J. Kale. You can find more information about Diane Hunt at www.dianehuntstudio.com. Constance Brosnan at www.etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash C-B-R-O-S-N-A-N-S. Clyde J. Kale at www.cjkaleartworks.com. If you'd like to participate or appear as a guest on the Artist Friends Podcast, please email cjkale at sign mystery-otr.com. That's cjkale at sign mystery-otr.com. This podcast is issued under the Creative Commons License 2019. Thank you for listening.